Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the past three years, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel focused and ready to take on every day. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Healthy aging doesn't need to be complicated. It certainly shouldn't feel complicated. That's why sometimes when you're taking all sorts of mixes of pills, potions, powders, supplements, whatever, it can become exhausting. But just one scoop of AG1 every single day covers all my nutritional bases. It helps support my mental and physical health, which are so important to me. And I don't need the hassle that can be part of the mental health issues. So in just 60 seconds every morning, I know I'm giving my body exactly what it needs and setting up my sustainable habits for the long run. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. That's why they've been a partner of the buy round for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. Well, hello and welcome everybody to a very special edition of the Buy Round podcast podcast. Usually, it's in the spot of an interview dropping, but we thought, what a better thing to do than give myself and Wade Graham's recap of what has been one of the most important days in our game's history. So just looking back at the scores, Manly 36, South Sydney 24, Roosters 20, Brisbane Broncos 10. Two upset victories, um, if you go off what the bookmakers were saying. But Wade, what have you made of this occasion? Oh, my... Firstly, I've been extremely grateful to be a part of it. Um, ten, 10 days ago, you know, t- two weeks ago, it wasn't even on my radar. And now, it, this is one of the biggest events, all the biggest occasions easily I, I've been to. Just as, obviously, where we are, um, the stadium, and how historic this is a moment in our game of, the, of NRO. And, and credit to the teams, um, the four teams, I was unsure how the games would go, particularly just because of the, the field changes, um, the, the preparations each team had to go through in the lead-up. Um, but they, they they went out there. There was a, there was a sense of occasion, and, and both teams delivered. They, it was exceptional footy, and um, yeah, I'm still I'm still like I'm just happy, man. It, it, it doesn't feel yeah. real, does it? And, and we're actually as well to give our listeners some insight. We've snuck into the manly coaching yeah. box where we've sort of taken over with the field in the background, the aftermath, the, the posts are coming down already. I think, you know, for me, it's a massive success. Over 40,000 people here. Some some will come and criticise the crowd, but, you know, plenty of Australians. I was speaking to a few Americans down there as well, which is arguably the most important thing. We love the fans travelling over, but we've got to get Americans to do the game. They absolutely loved it. A lot of them were talking about, hey, that guy's injured. Why are we not on a timeout? I was like, well, because we just, in rugby league, we just get up and carry on and we just crack on and we, we, t- we, we get back up for our teammates and they were saying, oh, that's, that's strange. And in the first game, there was claret everywhere. Yeah. Like, why, why, why are these guys allowed to continue on? And, and for me, you know, some people might disagree with this, but that, that's a selling point of our game. And obviously we've got player welfare to consider in terms of the concussion protocols and all that, but it's a huge selling point for our game that the brutality and the nature of our sport and the culture and the the mindset of the player to just keep going, not let your teammate down. Yeah, well, we we're lucky enough, um, you know, as our roles, both at Triple M and being a part of the NRO team over here, and we alternated games. So I, during the first game I was down, uh, on the field, I met Zay Jones, who's a wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And oh, he, yeah. he was so impressed with our game. And he, he didn't really know the rules and was, was following it hard to go along. But the, the nature of the, the competition, the offense and the defense, how it continually flows. And um, 
just the, the, the non-stop pace of our play, he, he was blown away. So this definitely a, a, caught the attention of a few people's eyes. And um, again, some of the facilities downstairs that we were lucky enough to be a part of, um, the open-air boxes, the watch uh, sport. First class. <laughs> look, we've got some great stadium in Australia. And look, I love the suburban grounds. But stadiums like this, it's just the icing on the cake. Yeah. And, you know, whether or not a core goes through a rebuild, Allianz, fantastic facility. But this place here, like they've spent so much money. There's not a detail that's been overlooked. It's absolutely exceptional. And I think there's, there's that sense now in Australia. Obviously, the main goal for the NRL is to put on a show and you know, introduce us to an American market. But I think... If you're over in Australia now, no matter what club you support, if you're a fan of the NRL, this is going to be on your ra oh, radar oh. to come next year. And if, you're one of, if your team is one of the lucky ones, and I say the lucky ones, because there's 13 teams that are going to be scrambling to get themselves playing round one here next year, in my opinion. Or they should be. And if, if not, then the only reason a team wouldn't want to come here is because their coach is paranoid about yeah. the effects that it could have later in the season. But... I think the game comes first and yeah, the, a, any NRL fan that's at home that wasn't here and there's plenty that will want to come back, get yourselves here next year. Oh, 100%. I just spoke to my, my partner on the phone and, you know, was gushing about how incredible the, the event is. But it's not just the event, it's just everything around it. And um, I, I, if you are back home in Australia or over in England and you watch this... In the next couple of years, your team isn't playing, but the opportunity arises for you to get over and be a part of this. I couldn't endorse it more because it's just it's 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 awesome. It's awesome, and it's what our game needs. And it sort of feels like, you know, I know we're we're looking at locking this away for the next five years, but it just seems like no challenge may be too big anymore for the game. You know, Peter Valandis and Andrew Abdo have set some lofty targets, but you know what? They pulled off some. They pulled off being the first competition being run worldwide in, after COVID, after yeah, COVID yeah. during COVID, and now they pulled off a double header in Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas that has caught the eye and dominated the Australian sporting market. Well, it, a hundred percent way to you know where my mind goes to. I I I can be a bit of a a deeper thinker, and I think, well, why don't we go NRL season kickoff, Las Vegas, UK, maybe Saudi, Australia, and New Zealand, just have a global takeover for round one to kick the season off. The game is booming in New Zealand. Some of the, the figures uh, that are being talked about in terms of what the Warriors are doing over there and Warriors fans are quick to come at me for ha not having them in the eight, even though they have improved. And I do I, like I, them. I'm pulling you up on that yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> you're pulling me up on that. But, but I think if we, if we look to make a global statement, imagine that for wow. round one, the season launch around the world, a presence in the United States, UK, maybe Saudi, because Saudi, again, people talk about Vegas and the entertainment capital of the world and Sin City, but it's changing its image. So they've got the F1 here. They've got... Uh, well, the sports NASCAR's teams, on tomorrow. Na well, uh, it might not be because the wind. wind but like, so, say wind, wind. Yeah, so away. NASCAR's here, F1's here, um, the tennis is here. The, you know, previously to the Raiders, they've never had an NF NFL team, and they laughed when they said the NFL team was coming here. An ice hockey team here, they made the Stanley Cup final in year one, I believe. So Vegas wants a, a footprint in the sp sporting market. Well, Excuse me. And Sa Saudi are the same. All the... And also, Vegas and Saudi are almost in competition with one another, with a lot of the heavyweight and the main boxer, boxing matches going on. Uh, Las Vegas was the home of boxing. Now most are going to Saudi Arabia. But, but for me, I'm like, why don't the NRL take advantage well, of these countries that want to bring sport to them? Well, yeah, I know you, you, you are a deep thinker. And, and, it, and it is, a, it is a, a big dream, but you've just seen the no... Ch no challenge may not yeah. be too hard anymore. If you'd have told us three, three, four years ago we'd ever be in Vegas, we would have laughed it away. Almost most people thought would have laughed it away when it started getting whispered about last year. Yeah. But here we are, and who who knows what Peter Valandis and Andrew Habdo, 
you know, have in store for the game. Yeah, well, look, it, it, it's hard. There's been hurdles to overcome. There's been teething problems. Oh, of course. But it's been a huge success. Yes. It's it, just going to get better. It really have, and it's going to get bigger and it's better. Gonna, and that's the thing when you think now fans and teams have, and the competition itself has 12 months to prepare for this. It's only going to grow and grow. And in terms of bringing the American fans to the market, I was speaking to Peter Volandis at a lunch, and you know, one of the main goals of this project is to have a game on prime time in American television around on an evening, which would be our Sunday afternoon game. Okay. So there's a two and a four o'clock game and the time frame fits perfectly. That's on the radar. If we can achieve that goal, like, wow. Well, if we can be on Fox Sports 1 in the United States every Saturday for an NRL season, that would be amazing. I feel like, too, with a lot of the, a lot of the, the issues that might have been experienced from the NRL team would have been a, a probably a lack of understanding from the Americans they were trying to respond to or not really catching their eyes. But now that this event has been here and then they've seen what our sport can do and, you know, what what they witnessed, I feel like the next time round they're going to have a, a lot more response from the, from the American side helping to, to put this thing together. So it's, it's only the start. It's only yeah, the start. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, for the teams that are here, it was – Four huge teams that all will have title ambitions for this season. Um, two teams to begin the round, Manly and South Sydney. They both missed the eight last season. Yep. Um, Manly come up with the victory immediately. Now you, you look at South who play Brisbane in round two, which is in two weeks' time. At Suncorp. At some, the, the pressure is on because you know, I thought South Sydney... Missing a couple of, couple of players in their outside backs, but they'll be really disappointed with that, especially you know the way they started that second half. I thought, oh, here we go. South's going to run away with that. couple of errors. Manly just capitalised on momentum and, and got away with an easy, well, an easy second half victory in the end. Yeah, and it's... The issue is this is it's, it's where they got in the trouble last year with South, right? They they would get to leads and then they wouldn't be able to defend their way home to the game. And we saw in the second game how how strong defensively both teams were. It took a Tedesco a bit of magic at the end to really seal the victory um, for the Roosters. But but mainly were mainly were great. Turbo looked great. DC was at his scheming best. Um, Luke, oh, played oh. With Brooks, Brooks was, Brooks was a good. great debut Yeah, great debut And he'll be better for that The nerves out of Ruben Garrick had Ruby a quality out. game Jason Saab looked uh, uh, To be fair I don't know how Lachlan Elias caught him Oh, that what back. about that trace back Yeah, but it's, So uh, looking at that game next week Brisbane South at Suncorp And, and despite South missing the eight last year, and we know the pressure they're under. They're still a heavyweight contender. So one of the heavyweights is going to be sitting 0-2 after the opening two rounds, which yeah. in our game turns the heat straight on. So that's, going to, that's already going to be a yeah. massive game round two for us um, kicking off up there. And Roosters look good, eh? Like, yeah, they, strong. They sure did, and you know, especially when you take into consideration some of the – the stars that were missing for the Roosters, Dominic Young not playing, yeah. obviously Jared, Jared Maria Hargraves, yeah. and obviously then Spencer Lenyu comes off the bench. So I think the Roosters in round one flex their championship muscles and, and credentials and, and show that they're the real deal this time around. Um, you compare this performance to the performance of round one last year against the new kids on the block, the Dolphins, yeah. chalk and cheese be between the level of performance. James Tedesco, what a player. He's He looks to me to be a player that's come back full preseason with a point to prove and an attitude of, if you guys are writing me off, my origin career is over, you know, I, I, I'm done, I'm, I'm on my sell by date, I'm going back to the West Tigers. He's come out with a point to prove today that he's still up there with the best fullbacks in the game. Well, he was exceptional. Everything he did, his effort can never be questioned, like, but he was, he was in everything um, tonight. He, those kick chases, he was getting involved, pressuring the full, pressuring Walsh, come up with a few, set up the try, and he, he led from the front. And the other one for me, Joey Manu. Like, wow. 
what a player. He flew over late with the, with the team because he just had the birth of a child. Yeah. So his prep was not great. He comes out here, reads a play, it makes an intercept. That flick pass around the corner. It's, it, it is special. And the, the one thing that caught my eye about the Roosters, you know, was their defence. Uh, they were exceptional. They had all the answers um, for for the Broncos early, you know, bar the, a bit of slick passing and, and connection down the left edge between Walsh and Mam, which Walsh finished off with the try. Um, they, they hardly looked like they were threatened by the Broncos. And, and I know the Roosters are renowned and, and Trent Robinson is renowned as a defensive coach. And so defending a smaller space was probably they had the most advantage, but you still got to handle the speed of Walsh, the, the, the dynamic um, plays, Ezra Mam comes up, Cobo, Staggs, the two wingers, Marino and Jesse Arthurs were, were, were superb as well, but the Roosters just, they didn't look phased. Lindsay Collins, what a player he's become. Victor Radley looks strong, a couple of dominant hits, and, and only to add, only to add with those plays, you said that they were missing for round two. Yeah, big, big statement from the Sydney Roosters. One thing that I really liked is... Um, they conceded a repeat set in the first half. Sam Walker shaped to go short drop out left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He flipped around, then went shaped to go short drop out to his right. And in the end, he did one straight in the centre. James Tedesco got it back. And I love seeing players look to take advantage of new rules. I guess the, the short drop out has, has become in vogue. And But now that there's no penalty, I really like it when I see players you know, put on little trick plays like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not everyone's cup of tea, but, but, it, but it came off for the Roosters today. I guess one of the things that may overshadow this is, you know, the the, the racist allegation um, that has been made against Roosters star recruit Spencer Lenu from Ezra Mam. I guess uh, you you spoke to Spencer Lenu on Triple yeah. after the game. It, it, it's hard to say, but no doubt we'll be hearing more about this as the the days continue on. Yeah, it's certainly uh, it's disappointing. That it's, it's a matter that we're going to have to look at, but of course we're going to have to look at because we can't have that in our game at all. So um, it, it'll it'll definitely be a strong talking point. Um, it's hard to comment on it until we hear some more from the from the referees and the uh, the audio they have on the field. But certainly we don't. We wish. You know, we don't want it to overshadow this event and what happened. That that's an that's an issue that, that the NRL is going to have to take care of. Um, but yeah, apart from that, you know, all systems go for the the launching of the season in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, huge um, start to the year. The product was absolutely sensational. We had Thursday night Newcastle as a sellout against Canberra yeah. on a Thursday night. That that uh, obviously this is mostly off the back of. Newcastle's fantastic finish to last season, but the game is absolutely thriving at the moment. Well, yeah, you look at that. So you have Newcastle and Canberra on that Thursday night, um, sold out up there to kick off again. Then it's Warriors hosting the Sharks. We know sold the Warriors out. are going to fill that stadium with the excitement and the buzz about that team, particularly their trial form. And then we have a game, Melbourne, who haven't lost in it round one in... 20 odd years up against the defending premiers three peats so <laughs> and then also to finish off on the Sunday the Dolphins in an all Queensland derby against uh, the, the Cowboys Gold, Cowboys wow and Benji Marshall he gets his first, his first two crack. points just, of his, uh, he gets two points to start the his coaching career oh, it's just what a time for rugby league as as someone who grew up um, you know loving the game loving it ultimately was able to build a career out of it uh, as a professional, uh, which I was, which I'm extremely grateful and proud of. But you know, at, at my core, I love love the game. So to see it doing well, to know f for a fact for the last, you know, w week, 48, 24 hours, and, and into the f next few days, next few weeks, it's it's going to be dominating the, the sporting market and and on, um, you know, the, the name on everyone's mouth. In their conversations, the things everyone's talking about, I, I love to see the game in a strong, strong spot. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I come from an area where rugby league doesn't exist, so I know know the impact it can have on people's lives. I know how good the quality of the competition is, how good the product is. That's why I love it so much, and that's why you know, for me, on a personal note, like Liverpool may as well be America. 
where I'm from and where I grew up because rugby league doesn't exist there. It's a new market there. It captivated me. Hopefully it can do the same on the American market. But Wado, we've got around about 24 hours left here yes. in Las Vegas, Nevada before we depart for Sydney. We've done you two. Met NFL stars. We've met, you've met NFL stars. And a, and a NASCAR guy. And a NASCAR guy. <laughs> The, re- the main reason for being here, because let's not forget this is a work trip. Yes. How are you planning to spend the last and the next 24 hours in Las Vegas? Well, I'm pretty tired after it's been a big day. Uh, and there is no doubt an after party organised from the NRL and their teams to, to celebrate. Ludacris, Ludacris is, uh, is the star. And, you know, I might be partial to have a few beers to, to cap the night off. And I promised myself an early night every night in Vegas – it hasn't happened, so uh, it's not likely it'll be happening again tonight. <laughs> the road to hell is paved oh. with good intentions, Wade. Um, 24 hours left. We've got a long day tomorrow. That, yeah. that, that late checkout, one o'clock, but we've got, got you know, not, we're not, pl- you know, first wheel problems. We've got to wait till 11 to fly out, so yeah. tonight well, could be uh, that very wind, interesting. Though, this wind, they shut the airport to down, so... The, today, if that if that the, wind doesn't go away, this is not a joke, by the way. So the Las Vegas airport has actually officially been closed down today, so at local time uh, Saturday. Uh, at time of recording, I believe is still closed because of the high winds. So if the winds continue, we may be stuck here for a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a, that's going to be a tough conversation to have with my wife. It it, it certainly could be. <laughs> um, I guess there are worse places to be <laughs> yeah. stuck. But um, I think after tonight and the past four days, I am ready for home and some normalcy within my life. Yeah, so. well, just for me, Jimmy, before we wrap, uh, we spent a lot of time here and I couldn't think of a much better guy. We've had a lot of fun together, mate, so I appreciate looking out for me and getting me into you two and yeah. having a good time. So <laughs> It's been absolutely fantastic, yeah, Wade. Fun, I'm sure on our, on our journey post-retirement, we'll be doing many more of these things and hopefully we'll be back next year. But um, next week, Newcastle, let's tee off again. I think, I think I'll be ready for another drink <laughs> after the newcastle Camberg game. It's, um, oh. yeah, what, what a week it's been. Thank you for everybody that's listened and tuned in and got the buy round content. If you are at home and thinking of coming next year, all I can say is do it. Do Las it, Vegas do it. is an amazing city. Um, it's got everything. It's everything you'd expect. There's so much to see and do other than just drinking on the strip and whatnot. But what a week it's been. And the rugby league. Yeah. That's why we're here. And congratulations to all four teams and all of the players that played. In the, they, they were sensational. They did the talking on the field. Yeah, and not just the, the when we say the team as in the players, I think a, a massive congratulations need to go out to like obviously not just Peter Volandis and Andrew Abdu but, but Abdo, but all the NRL staff that put this together, you know, helped manage our schedules while we were over here, dealt with all the issues, like it must have took a tremendous amount of organization and effort and rejigging of um of the of the scheduling. But, yeah, tremendous job. They got it done. I think if anyone deserves a night out after this, it's the NRL, it's the, yeah, it's the NRL team. No, so. 100%. Couldn't yeah. agree with you more. So um, watch out Las Vegas for the next 24 hours. And thank you, everybody, for listening on the bar round. We'll be back next week. We're going to land in Sydney. And myself and Charlie are going to go straight to the studio and get recording midweek matters. And hopefully Cheese um, comes back around and we'll be with him later in the week. Thanks for listening, everyone. Weirdo, it's been a pleasure sharing Las Vegas with you. Catch you all soon.